Yeah, I see him. He's about to open the trailer. Oh yeah, four by eight sheet, a half inch sandy utility board, baby. We hit the jackpot. I'm going in. Hey, hand over the plywood or else. <laughs> or else what? Or I'll cut you with my knife. Where the hell did you even come from? What are you gonna do, just carry it back into the woods? I ain't playing around. Neither am I. You asked for it. I'd probably walk the other way, friend. If you want plywood so bad, get off your lazy ass and work for it. See you later. Yeah, yeah, it's just, just plywood. What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today, we're gonna be doing the work trailer build. I recently picked up a brand new 2021 six by 12 trailer with the flip door. She's got all the essentials, very nice size. This baby is gonna make my life a million times easier being able to haul stuff for my customers and just to put all of my work stuff, all my tools, all the things that I bring on the job all the time, all can be staying in here instead of taking up room in my garage because I've been having to throw all of my stuff in the back of my truck for the last three years now and it sucks. Like throwing it all in there and then I get home and then we have to go somewhere, go to groceries and then I throw it all in the garage and then we have to put it all back in there. When I go do the next job, it, I just could not handle it anymore. It's perfect. I already got my business logo in production right now. It's gonna be a nice four foot sticker here right on the side with my number and a list of things that I do. I might be able to get that in time for this video, but I don't know when the lady's gonna get it done, so I might just have to post this video and add that on later. Because I'm gonna build this up kind of the way I want it to make everything easier and just a nice little tool bench, some shelves, maybe hang some extension cords. I'm not really sure how I wanna do it yet, but I still wanna be able to leave me enough space in here to pull the four-wheeler in and the lawnmower or haul the bike somewhere and still grab four by eight sheets of plywood or drywall from my customers. Like, I gotta have all use out of this thing. Utilize all this space and then just build a tool area up here in this kind of awkward space in front of the door here. That's how I think I'm gonna do it. And I know the fish house slash camper, the camp fish, you guys are waiting for your specs video. And you will get that video. I was actually gonna do that first because the family and I are gonna go on a little camping trip up in Duluth like we do every year. And uh, we're gonna bring this baby, test it out as a camper, because we tested it out as a fish house already. And now we're gonna put it to the camping test. Maybe do a little bit of off-roading, I'm not sure exactly. We're gonna be trying a new spot, so I don't really know what to expect for this new spot. You guys will get your specs video before we take this out on the trip. Kinda just all be one merged video, so. Stay tuned for that one next. The reason I didn't do that first is because I didn't want you guys to see this big thing in the background and be like, why is there a white trailer in your yard? What are you doing now? So I figured I'd explain myself first and then do this. But before we do anything on the trailer, we're gonna take the bike for a ride because I gotta keep my bike build people happy. They've been waiting for a video. Here she is guys, still gorgeous. It's a gorgeous day here in Minnesota now. It's finally warm. So we're gonna go for a little rip. All right, I'm pretty freaking excited for this. You guys like my transition, so let's see if we can get this one down. Ready? Hiya! Woo! I hope that was worth it. I also hope that it's not too windy because it's windy as shit outside, and this is a new mic that I'm trying in the helmet, so I hope I'm not like ear raping you guys, but I also hope that you can hear me and the sound of this exhaust. So much louder, dude. I love this thing. Yes! I needed this today. Thank you, God. Man, this feels so good right now. Listen to that crackle, guys. Oh man, this thing is so dirty, dude. I'm so in love with this bike. Like every day I ride it, I just like fall in love with it all over again. Newsplash, 813 subscribers, you guys. Like, 
I honestly never thought I would ever see 500 and here we are almost to a thousand. Thank you guys so much. Well, we're gonna pull over here. Guys, I never thought that I would ever see 500 subs and like we're creeping up on a thousand that's incredible but yeah i just wanted to just take a second just come here to my little spot show you guys the bike keep the bike build people happy and around but just to thank you guys for watching my stuff and you guys kick ass definitely looks like rain i hope it doesn't rain my dad Man, we gotta stop and say hi to my dad. We're gonna hide right behind his truck. Ah, oh, shit! He saw me. Hi, dad. Oh, man, there was a bug on the screen. Sorry, guys, at least I saw it now. What's up, dad? Farming. Farming? Farming Chad. Oh. Uh, just went for a little ride. Keep these guys happy. Because I haven't done a bike video in a while and I don't want them to get bored with me, you know. Yeah. Some content coming soon with this guy. He's been doing fish replicas lately. And he kicks ass, you guys. Like, if you want a fish done and you don't want to have a taxidermy or maybe you are a catch and release type person, this guy can make dreams come true in that sense, yeah. I got your brother bed in my hood. He. Oh, man, let's see. Oh. <laughs> I heart dicks. <laughs> Is that true? No. It's not. <laughs> Rubber side down. Rubber side down. No wheelies. Love you too. My favorite thing about coming into the garage is a little skirt action. Who doesn't like a nice skirt? Dang, you guys okay? You just took a freaking bug to the face. That's why we wear helmets. So now, back to the trailer. I'm gonna go pick up some materials I need and then we're just gonna start doing stuff to it and going with the flow and I wanna bring you guys with me. So, we're gonna cut to me already being back with all the material. Dude, get off there. That's the world's currency right now. Look guys, I got a sheet of plywood. One freaking sheet. <laughs> Look at that. So, one four by eight sheet of half inch sanded plywood, $47 at Home Depot. I was gonna go to my local lumber yard and get the wood there, but they wanted double the price. So I did the math and I saved myself about a hundred bucks and went to Home Depot, which is a half hour away, not a big deal. So we got four by eight sheet of plywood, five two by fours and then some miscellaneous tubs that I can put on my shelves in here. And I obviously, I know things are gonna add on as I go and I think, oh, that'd be nice, I'll get that. But like, just kind of a starter pack. This is what I got. So I got a Toat, nice little deep tub with a lid so I can put my bigger tools, have them all confined in one space. Then I got a rack for my extension cords. Got a broom holder so I can put my floor scraper on one of these, my shop broom on the other one, and then maybe something else on the other. Then I got me a drill bit and screw, nail, wiring, clip, whatever you will. Little organizer. So I can put all of my stuff in there. A couple Dremels, drill bits, screws, tile spacers, what have you. I went with the Husky brand just because these were the cheapest and I'm not really looking to be a 100% name brand contractor. I just go with what makes sense and what is the best value. So for the amount of money that I wanted to spend, this was perfect. Um, I have mismatched tools anyway. I got rigid drills. I got, uh, I don't even know what brand my chop saw is. Like Hitachi, something like that. I got Craftsman tools, Black & Decker tools, DeWalt tools, kind of just mismatch anyway, so 
I didn't want to have something specific that cost $80 when I could buy a $19.99 tub. That works out real nice. Then these things are all stackable and they have handles, which I like. I'll be able to just tuck these on the little shelves with a little edge lip so they can't fall off and it's going to be great. So yeah, that's about it. Time to uh, crack a beer and do what I do best, build. That's the taste of hard work and freedom. Sharps. Here, bring this to mom. That won't poke your eye out. Or bring it to mama. Pretty cool. No, 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 no. <laughs> with you guys before where we just chill for a little bit before the end of the night just drink a beer together I don't know if you're drinking one right now I don't even know what time you're watching this video but if you got a beer in your hand cheers to you thanks for subscribing I think I've had like I don't know like seven or eight beers and I didn't really eat much for dinner so I'm definitely feeling it Morning! So I ran and got my morning coffee and I also went to the hardware store and picked up some three quarter inch schedule 40 conduit two eight foot sticks so we can safely run our electrical through here. That way if I ever go to sell the trailer and get a bigger one or something different in the future that's all you know good to go and everything's protected because a lot of people don't use conduit when they're just running wires but I don't know if you're banging stuff around here it's best to just cover them up. So I got a one-way receptacle here that I'm going to drill a hole in the back of it and that's where the inlet's going to come on the side of the trailer that you plug into the house and then that's going to come straight up into the three-quarter inch conduit over and then to a two-way receptacle somewhere in the middle here in case I decide to do that drop that drop table and then another two-way somewhere up here by the bench and then it'll come out of there up to the ceiling and that's where I'll run the wire to have my LED light bars strung across the middle here so I can have light in here. And then for my rear, picked up a brand new 14.3 standard extension cord. I'm going to cut the ends off and this is going to be my house wire ran through. Pretty simple. And then this is the 15 amp power inlet so you can plug an extension cord right into the side of the trailer plug it into someone's garage or a generator or whatever so you can power up your trailer. So now we get to strategically figure out where I want to drill the hole so it's not directly behind the wheel where a bunch of rocks and stuff are going to flick up. So I might try to get a little bit closer to the wheel well here. Go back three feet. Okay. Now I have my three hole set and I'm not going to drill going that way because it's going to fray a bunch of metal and it could chip the paint. So I'm going to come back in from the other side 
now that I know where my hole is. Before we mount it to the wall, I'm going to cut the end of this extension cord off and hook the wires up to this first. So we'll cut the end off, shove the wire through so I can connect it on the outside and then mount it just in case I don't have enough clearance in here to hit these set screws when I put the wires in. The reason I got an extension cord, one, it's because they're all confined and easy to slide through your conduit, and two, most extension cords are stranded wire, not a solid wire, and when you're in any kind of a moving unit, like a fish house or a camper or a work trailer, you wanna have stranded because they last a lot longer bouncing down the road when you have regular solid house, house wire, once it bends enough in one spot, it breaks and then you have no connection. Whereas these the stranded wire, which is a bunch of little mini wires wound together, they will last a lot longer and they're able to flex more when you're bouncing down the road. So just something to keep in mind if you're going to do something like this. Okay, we're going to shove the wire outside. Like that and then go outside with this stuff. So we got our white, which is our neutral, into the white prong. Our black, which is our hot, go into the black clip. And our green, which is our ground, goes into the ground clip. We're gonna use longer torque screws so we can go all the way through and then into the wood siding. That way when you're plugging stuff in and pulling it out, it's not gonna pull on the siding like this and look like shit and break the seal. So we're gonna get longer screws and do it this way. Just like that. Nice tight water seal and bug seal. like this your cord from the house plug it in just like that nice solid connection pull it out doesn't yank on the siding and break the seal with the caulk that's how it's done son putting your wires onto the screws. If you're not gonna use the press holes in the back, which is usually for solid copper wire, and you have stranded, it's just easier to do your little hook loop. And then always wrap the loop around the screw in the direction that you're gonna screw. So as you're screwing, once the screw tightens up, it tightens up that loop with it. If you go the other way, you're gonna loosen up your loop and you can, your wire could potentially fall off. So, being that we're in a trailer that's a moving unit, you definitely want to make sure that they are tight and snug on the screw. And I think um, with the empty space I have in that receptacle down there, I might add a uh, breaker. I ordered one on Amazon, still hasn't come yet, and I'm just getting impatient, so I decided to just go ahead with the build anyway. But when that comes in, I am gonna add a 15 amp breaker switch and that's going to be down inside this lock receptacle so that way if anything were to happen trips the breaker and i know exactly where to access it covered and protected from curious fingers that looks pretty good now we're going to do the same thing over here but like this like that and i also wouldn't picked up one more 90 so i can come off of here straight up and then we're going to go into another receptacle in which I just went and picked up because I realized that I forgot these last two things. And that's gonna sit right about there somewhere. And then both of the cords coming out for the two LED lights will be all connected in this nice safe box. These are the LED bench lights. I actually got these for my workbench in the garage to go like under some upper cabinets, but the lights that I have in there right now are super bright and it's more than enough light. So these would kind of just be a waste in there. So 
That's what I'm gonna use in here. They're nice lightweight. You can take this cover plate off and then you can literally just self tap some screws into the beams up here and have them fixed and permanent. So here's how they look on the inside. So just take some self tappers between these two ribs here. Make sure you don't hit your LED bar and you can self tap them right to the steel cross member. And they ain't going nowhere. Well, now we can plug the trailer in and at least test the light out. Now we're going to plug the light in, see if she lights up. Yes, this is perfect. One right there for the workbench, and then maybe pop one right here for some lighting when you're working on stuff. That's it. Now we can run this last wire. Okay, we're mounted back here. Zip tied the line up so it's tight. Zip tied that one, dropped them both in, hooked up to the hot wire, put the cover plate on the receptacle box. And then, then we get to, then we get to run both. Septicles are all covered. All the lifts both run. Lights are both mounted. And obviously, I didn't do conduit up here because it's at the ceiling, and they're they're fine up on the ceiling. These are the ones I was worried about. So our hot wires connected. And these are strung up nice and safe and out of the way. Now I just gotta shorten up these cables. But I'm going to plug it in and see how it looks with them both going. Sweet! Freaking sick! This is one hell of a work trailer, boys. You charge up the drills. Just one more time, we'll make sure they work. Nice. Hell yeah, brother. Now I'm gonna clean all this shit up and get everything organized the way I want it to be. Well, I think I finally got her the way I want her. A few days of just thinking about my essentials and using it on a couple jobs and just figuring out what I like and don't like. I think I got it the way I want it. So this is basically the finished work trailer. All of our electrical here, a couple of levels, my square, step stool, floor scraper, cement mixing hoe, and my shop room. Basically all I ever use. <clears throat> On this side I got my utility table which is actually a $30 beer pong table. I've used it for so many years and it's seen better days but I just like keeping my old things until I cannot use them at all anymore and then I buy new so she's still got a few more jobs left in her and that's just two holes drilled and then two screws put in the wall so it doesn't come off same with these my two uh, sawhorses there's just two screws screwed up at an angle and then you just set it on there and then when it hits the floor it's rested so those I've gone on so many bumps and those never fall off this unit here is my brand new tile saw. The old one has seen better days and it was finally time for me to buy a new one because it made more sense to be, able to, to be able to speed things up and get stuff done faster and more efficient cuts and just, it was just time to get the new new. So I picked me up a new Floorcraft tile saw and it's all complete with a stand and a separate trough. So here's the trough. The stand comes out, just like that. Trough goes on, saw sits on top of that. And then you saw finished nails, drywall and backer board screws, and then just miscellaneous building screws. And like I said, once I run out of these, I'll rip the label off and fill them with whatever. That completes this wall. And then up front, this cluster of an organized mess that I know what it is. 
But you guys probably don't. Got my air compressor here and my shop vac on a chain. And I can adjust the length of the chain with these little clip loops here. So if I don't have this width or I don't have this width, I can take one of them out and make the chain smaller or longer, whatever it may be. So then I got a bucket full of all my tile trawls, um, just miscellaneous trawls that I always use, my grout trawls in there, my cement levelers are in there for making shower pans. And then in the other bucket, I got all of my uh, caulking that I usually use, my tile sealers, that's all over there. This is my toolbox that I bring into people's houses like every time for either tile job, flooring job, or handyman work. Um, got all my essentials in there, basic tools, uh, razor blades, call pairs, safety glasses, knee pads, gloves, staplers, scrapers, pliers, you name it. I have just about everything that I usually use stuffed in this box and then all of my spares are in this old toolbox that I used to use. Behind there we have just a basic toolkit for needing to fix things stuff like that happens all the time so i have an option there and then stuff behind there is my hardwood flooring nailer i didn't really have a nice place to put that i might hang it up on the wall instead eventually but i don't know and the last and the coolest part of the inside of this work trailer is something that my old man hooked me up with Went on a little camping trip, which you'll see in the next video coming out where we tested out the fish house as a camper. And I'm like, Dad, I know you wood burn, and I want something wood burned. I want some kind of a quote wood burned in the trailer to look at every day to keep me going. Because that's just the way I am. I like corny stuff like that. There's a lot of heart and passion in my family when it comes to this kind of stuff. So being able to have him make me something in here that's going to be in here forever, that's pretty badass. So here's what he got for me. He painted my company logo right here, smack dead in the middle. And then underneath it, one of the most badass quotes that he's always told me growing up, right there. If you always do what you've always done, you'll always get what you've always got. I absolutely love it. At the end of the day, when I'm tired and sore, just seeing stuff like that just gets me going another hour. You know, just a couple extra things that day. So, Dad, if you're watching this, thanks a lot for that, man. I love it. So now that you guys seen the logo and got a sneak peek of that, I got to show you the outside. Remember in the beginning of the video when I'm like, I might be able to get it in this video, might not, and I ended up getting my logos in time, so I slapped them on the side of the trailer, and it looks pretty badass. Boom! Hoots Innovative Finishes, right there, baby. Nice and clean. And then a list of a couple things that I do. Flooring, tile work, woodwork. Custom tile showers, custom accent walls, handyman work and more. And then my slogan that's also on my business page. Making dreams come true one project at a time. Perfect. Right there. Yes, this is my business phone number, so please be respectful and don't spam and do stupid shit. With that being said, that's pretty much all I have for this video. I hope that I inspired you and gave you some ideas for your own trailer build. If you're planning on doing something like this, if you do this kind of stuff for work, and you were kind of just wondering how to do it, there you go. Showed you how to do power to your trailer safely. Organize it the way you want to organize it. And uh, just get shit done. So I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If not, that's fine too. But regardless, life is short. So get out and do all the things. And if that means building you a work trailer so you can get stuff done faster and more efficiently, you build that friggin' work trailer. See you in the next one.